Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Holopon Solo Sagas. And today we are playing the pirate game of piratey goodness, Pirate Borg. So, welcome back. Welcome back subscribers. Welcome back non-subscribers. If you're a non-subscriber, would you mind hitting the little subscription button, just adding your one to the number? I've been very much grateful. In fact, I'll say thank you. Uh, if you are have already done that, you are oh, just mind-blowingly awesome. Unbelievably awesome. Tell you some other awesome people, the members, people who have joined and uh, done the old community membership thing. That's very, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you for supporting, uh, thank you for watching, and thank you for here being here for Pirate Borg. So, Pirate Borg. What I'm going to do today is a little bit of two things. I'm going to, so what's been asked of me is uh, how do I approach the books and do a bit of a how to soloing with Pirate Borg, particularly for pre written adventures? Because what we're doing is we're using the pre written sandbox stuff, which is in the main book. And so, what our intentions for, for today's session, because of last session, was we are going to explore the old lighthouse. The old lighthouse has written up within here as one of the standard sort of Mork Borg uh, one page adventures like you would do for a delve, uh, such as from uh, Solitary Defilement, rolling up a delve and exploring. But this is different because instead of it being rolled up randomly so we don't know what's coming, it's all written here. And so the question is, how do, you, how do I approach these? Now, one of the things that's different about the way I approach things is that I am more than happy to read a book multiple times or watch a film multiple times or a stand-up routine multiple times and I will enjoy it each time because it's not so much the surprise of what comes next, it's enjoying the journey to the end of it. I quite like that. And so the fact that I sort of know what's going on uh, doesn't differ from the fact that uh, I'm playing it through as two things, a dungeon master, a GM, DM, GM uh, and a player. So I think it was in a, uh, a Parts Per Million, one of the first ones I ever read. Uh, uh, his name's Peter and he's got a double barreled last name. Uh, he described being a solo play as basically you have to be both the games master and the player and you have to, it's switching between those roles on a constant basis. You're never doing one at the same time, you're always switching between the two roles. And so uh, one, I mean, it's, you could sort of see it in the Dragon Bane that was released on Tuesday, because this is released on, on my Thursday. Uh, it's other people's uh, Tuesday. Because uh, I'm based in Australia and I'm back in Australia, uh, we are ahead. So I'm like eight, nine, sometimes 10 hours ahead of you, mostly. Uh, and so if you go and look at that, I also discuss uh, uh, sort of player knowledge and GM knowledge. So I knew there were some items there that I actually wanted uh, Crackbang and the crew to get, but they don't get because they didn't make the rolls and they didn't think about it, so, oh well. So it's like that. So what we'll do is we, we're standing there, uh, the team, I, so we were standing there, you see, me and the crew, there was me, Young Bates, Exor, and Steens, all standing there looking up at this tower. Now it was night time, because that's the time we got there. Also, I want them to get there at night time because there's a bit in here which says, at night, the ghost of the lighthouse keeper, use ghost crew, page 96, haunts the lighthouse. He does not like visitors. Because I want them to meet the, the, the ghost because there's some stuff that they can do with him or they can fight him and it's quite interesting. So I've decided they're going to be there at night time. Realistically, who's going to explore a hidden, a, like a, a haunted castle, uh, not lighthouse at night? No one. But Captain Pete, he's thinking differently, isn't he? He's thinking, if I go explore that at night time, no one else will be there. Uh, so, what would, uh, uh, so, so what we did, we looked there and what it was, it were a perch to top a rocky cliff and it were overlooking Coral Town. And there was a rumbly, crumbly lighthouse. Now within there, let's do, let's do a check and see if the light was on upstairs. Oh yes. So I'll also lean heavily on GM emulator because this is, to, to, to throw in some of the unknown bits, because I know what's going to happen, but let's throw in some unknowns using the old, the old GM emulator. Here we go. So, we'll do a scene check. Shall we reset the, shall we reset the chaos? 
Let's reset the chaos. Right. Yes, sorry, I got distracted by a text message because I have got my phone in my hand and I am a spiritual millennial. Uh, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to reset the chaos factor back. I think it goes to, does it go to 10? No, 10 isn't, that no, starts at 5, doesn't it? All right, so we're going to set the chaos to 5. And first off, we're going to do a scene check. So the scene check first because we've come along and we're, we're expecting that we're just going to, the outside is normal. So, scene check. Is everything normal? Yes, it's as expected. So it's as we described it. So next we're gonna say, uh, all right, is the lighthouse at the top lit? Now, I'm gonna say that's very likely because sometimes it's lights. So is the, the light shining? No, it's not. No. Oh. See, like that, I wanted it to shine. So we were looking there and we were told that it was lighting, but it weren't lighting. We looked up and there was no glow at all. But then instead, we're gonna make a presence check and see if we can see anything moving around up there, which could be the ghost. Let me see if I can find those dice that I beat that small child at the roll for up at the uh, uh, tabletop con. Uh, did I tell that story? So we were playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. We were playing a 5e session of Dungeons and Dragons, me and Mandy. Uh, and there were some really young kids. And at the end, they were giving away free, where are they? They were giving away uh, free dice. And they, oh, here we go. And these dice were, were available, but what you had to do is you had to roll a d20, and it was the person who rolled the highest on the d20. Me and this, I don't know, six year old, both rolled 19. Uh, and then he rolled an 18, and I rolled a nat 20. Way! And I got these free dice and beat a small child. Now, a kind man would have said, there, there, young fella, don't get upset, have the dice. But I went, awesome, and left. Uh, so, Cat Pete is gonna have a look. Uh, now I told that story, I'm gonna tell another story soon about Oxford and these men in bowler hats. Uh, well, if I remember. Uh, so, he's gonna see with his eyes, he's gonna have a look and see if he can see, but we'll say he's got a tw it's night time. We'll give him a 14 which he's got a plus zero, so let's see. No. Uh, he was having a look and he's trying to see, I can't see anything up there, can you? Well, no captain, I can't, but it is quite dark, isn't it? Should we wait till the morning? No, where's your adventure? <laughs> this is a bottom joke. Oh, she's in Stockholm. Really? Yes, I like to call her my adventure. Uh, and so we, we will voyage in to the uh, lighthouse. So what it says, it says at the bottom uh, that, that sometimes at night, there's a one in 10 chance, it says here, that the governor arrives uh, and that's outside. So as they approach, let's, let's show you this. So as they approach, we've got this bit here and here uh, is the cellar doors uh, for this, which comes down to this part here. Here, so I can see the map, but they, they obviously don't know the map. Here are the cellar doors. Uh, which come down. Now, if we'll, we'll assume, we'll make them come around this way, up approach, so climbing up. We climbed up these craggy crocs. Crocs? Aye, crocs. Old crocodiles, all dead, piled up. Lighthouse was on top of them. And there's a one in 10 chance. Let's see, let's see what that was. Now, if I roll a one, the governor's there, standing at those deck doors. No, I rolled a seven. Uh, so we got there. And we looked around and it's all rocky and crumbly and it looked like an awful state. I tell you what, you could probably buy it as a one euro house uh, in Italy, Sicily precisely, which may be a story to tell later in the year. Uh, so he goes around, they go around the bottom and they're, they're just exploring it and they come around to the front where there's these double doors. Now, let's see. Let's say that there is a one in 10 chance, no, let's give it a two in 10 chance that these, do, do, oh, all right, let's ask the GM emulator. That'll do. All right, I think it's a 50-50, the doors are locked. Are the doors locked, Mr. GM emulator? Yes. Now, we got the doors and the doors wouldn't budge. These doors won't budge. Uh, Captain? Yes, Danes. Can I knock them down? Of course you can, lad. Off you go. So Staines will approach the doors uh, and carefully, he'll size them up, he'll look them up and down, he'll like uh, chest them a little bit, like give the doors a bit of a jiggle, uh, push them, 
Uh, then he'll get his hammer. All right, Betty, come on. And he'll give him a whack. Now, he needs to get, let's give him a 12. He's got a minus two and he'll do, uh, so he needs tens to hit it. <laughs> he missed, he's so excited. He hits the door frame. Come on, lad, pull your finger out and hit the door. Uh, so then he'll take another, he'll take, he'll come back a step, charge forward with Betty, Betty! And go to whack it again. Uh, 13, nice, he hits it. Now, he's got, a, it's a D6 damage. Let's say it's got six hit points. So he hits it once, what do we get? One point, that's rubbish. That's rubbish, lad. He's, he's rubbish. I don't know, Captain. I think he's trying very hard. Oh, he's trying me very hard. That's what he's doing. It's all right, let me have another hit. No. <laughs> I'm going to say Betty breaks. His hammer breaks. Betty breaks. Snap. Oh, Betty. Oh, my God. Uh, so they'll approach the door and they'll give it a bit of a jiggle. Uh, and Captain Pete, Captain Pete is going to, Captain Pete's going to try and pick the lock. Captain Pete's going to get out his knives and he's going to put his knives between and see if he can flip the latch. Uh, we'll give him, uh, we'll say that's a uh, agility test. He's got plus two in agility. Uh, it's difficult, so we'll say, I don't know, 16. So he needs to roll 14 or more. 14 exactly. There's a clicky sound and he pushes the door open. Do you know, lads, I don't know what you lot will do without me. I honestly don't. I think you'd all just be sitting there in the pub, drinking with no adventure whatsoever. And the other three look wistfully away into the sky. Right, come on then. So we go in. Now, we can see that this is laid out as like, uh, it looks like there's some food left on, but it's all very desiccated. Almost like it's been sitting there for 30 years. Desiccated and sitting around and all in there. Now we've got in here, uh, unused in years, dust covers everything, fireplace, dinner table, two beds, one recently used and smelly. Let's see if they notice that. Uh, presence check, a 13. Do you know, I reckon someone's been sleeping here. That bed looks like it's been used. I think it stinks, Captain. Yes, lad, it does. Mind you, that could be stains. I don't know, I had a bath yesterday. Uh, then we've got a cast iron iron stone resting against the wall with a chimney. Vents to the exterior. Uh, so there is something inside there. Uh, but let's see if they get the idea. Let's see if they get the idea. I think it is unlikely. Very unlikely or just unlikely? Unlikely. Let's do a scene check. Entering the room. Nope, as expected. All right. Is there, do they think to look in the fireplace? Yes. Oh. Captain? Yes. Uh, should we have a bit of a, a look around there, Captain? You know, maybe have a search, see if we can find something good. Uh, all right then. Uh, young beds, you search the beds. Stains. Keep an eye out the door and have a look around. Uh, uh, I'll start search. Where, where shall I search? Uh, why don't you search the fireplace? Don't tell me what to do, XO. But I'm going to search the fireplace anyway. So he'll go over and search the fireplace. So I'm going to give him a presence check of 14. If he fails, D2 bilge rats are going to pile out as he opens up the, the, the oven of it. It's an arger. Do you know what an arger is? There's an arger. It's an arger. It's a cast iron stove, arger. Right, so he needs to roll 12s. 16. Oh, bloody hell, rats! Uh, they dive out and they go to attack everyone. There's D2 rats. There's two rats, no, it's one, isn't it? One to three. Uh, so a bilge rat, which is on page 86. This isn't gonna take us long. Uh, page 86, bilge rat is gonna di dive out. All right, give us a second, I'll write down its stats. All right, one bilge rat is not much to have. It's a disgusting, horrible, uh, foot and a half long rat, soaking wet, that's obviously been sitting there from the sea, hiding from the sea. Uh, it dives out, so first off, where's me, where's me? Shortcut thing. We haven't done a fight like this in ages, have we? Uh, first off, we've got initiative, which is a D6 plus agility. So D6 plus two gives us a five. The PC goes first. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, I think, cat, cat and Pete, cat and Pete. So this bilge rat, it dived out with teeth gnashing. 
and I pulled my flintlock as fast as you can be. Bang! Uh, he's going to try and hit, which is a presence check. Not his best. Uh, he could have done the sword. Presence check. So he needs to hit 12s. 16! He, sh he shoots it. I caught it right in the face. So he does 2d4 damage. I've only got 1d4 here. Uh, doing 2. 4 points of damage. He's only got 1 hit point. It... Pfft, oh, and I've got bits of build rat all over me. Bloody last uniform. So the build rat pops. Uh, there's nothing good you can get out of a build rat. Uh, apart from a mess. Uh, and then Cat and Pete will uh, spend some time reloading that flintlock, tuck it back into his uh, belt, as uh, Exo is going to lean in and go, Oh, Captain, did you know there's something in here? Is there? What's in there? It looks like, oh, oh, there's some, some crystals and some silver. So there's a purple crystal worth 150 silver. Uh, where shall I write that? I'll write it on this. And there's also a bag of silver worth 30 silver and 7 silver. All right. So then they'll look around and they'll just examine the other bits. They'll spend a few minutes examining and checking stuff out. And I'm going to roll a d10 to see if they hear some noises from underneath them, which might be the governor down there doing some uh, rituals. Uh, now, why would he be doing rituals? I know why. No. All right then, what do you reckon next then, lads? Should we go down pub? Uh, why don't we go explore the rest of the tower? Because there must be something going on. Is there anything else in here? No, that's it. So the stairs going up are really, they're like uh, moss-covered stone, uh, some rotten. There's cobwebs. Uh, and the stairs lead up. You can see here. Look here. Look, look, look. Stairs going all the way up. And they come up to here, over here. I uh, know, oh there's little steps coming up there in this room here. It's not going to, oh, I wanted to make them fall down the stairs. So they can't come in these stairs and look around here. Now then, when we came in here, there was also, it was full of cobwebs. We had to pull the cobwebs aside. And I was going, oh, there's no bloody spiders. Uh, let's see, let's do, let's do a scene check as they come in. Everything's still going all right for now. Scene check, everything's fine. Altered scene, no scene. Oh, all right, an altered scene. Okay, I'm gonna do, let's do a reaction check. Now there's a, there's a table somewhere for, for a reaction. I used it last session, I think. Found it. I mean, these books are a work of art, but bugger me if their rolls are all over the place. 2d6. Uh, 10. Almost friendly. Okay, we'll take it, it's almost friendly. As they step in, the, the moonlight flitters through the window slightly and illuminates uh, a shadowy form which is standing, uh, well no, a glowy ghost-like form which is standing uh, over the book. Uh, it turns, looks at them, and because we rolled this, it's almost friendly, we're not gonna make him uh, get angry and have a go at them. This is, uh, it's a, it looks like an old, I don't know how you're gonna tell he's Dutch, but it looks like an old Dutch bloke, big beard, uh, not, not, uh, uh, not our friend uh, Dingy, he's a skinny fella. Uh, oh, he looks like, oh God, what's his name? The bloke who played the Green Goblin, and he's in that film uh, where he plays the Lighthouse Keeper. I've not seen it, I've only seen like the trailers and stuff. Uh, I, I keep playing to watch it. But he's got a big beard, and he's skinny and gaunt, and he turns and goes, oh. <laughs> he turns and goes, lecker, <laughs> and goes, it's only, it's only Dutch, I know. That and nay. Uh, no, he says nay, that's better, which is no. Nay, and then he heads up, uh, then just goes straight up uh, through the floor uh, and up to up to the next floor up. Uh, and the, the, four, the four lads all look at each other and go, did you see that? I think I did, Captain. I, I, I don't know whether I liked it, but I saw it and, and I think it wasn't that right. Uh, so because the, the thing was leaning over the table, uh, young Bates will go over to the table and look what's on the table. Uh, There's a book here, Captain. It, it's, a, it's some kind of journal. Uh, so it's a, a journal. Uh, 
Let's see, will they, will they take it or will they read it? I reckon it's quite likely that they're going to read it, particularly young Bates. No, they don't take it. They don't read it. Uh, they, they go, right, I don't know if we've got time to read that for now, but let's go up. Uh, oh, go on. Let's, one more check. Bates, you're going to read it? Exceptionally, yes. So Bates is going to stay behind and ignore them as they all go up these rickety stairs. Now, because they're going up the rickety stairs, we will make them make an agility check. Uh, Captain will make one first. Uh, 14, that's good enough. Actually, you can make it for all of them. And so, uh, they, they're, oh, these stairs, are, that's, they need, they need someone coming and fixing these. Uh, as they're going up, and at that point, so Bates is at the bottom, he's flicking through, and he has a read, and he's, you can see a little tear dripping down his eye, because it tells this sad, ta so this is what I would say to the player. Uh, it tells this sad tale of the lighthouse keeper, uh, and it's obviously it's written by the lighthouse keeper, and it's saying how uh, he had a massive argument with uh, his uh, daughter, uh, and uh, it says how he was so angry with himself for having the argument with his daughter, uh, because uh, it says it says here they quarrelled over money, uh, but it was money involved with. Uh, so she works as uh, a seamstress, a sail maker, a seamstress. Uh, her name is Fam uh, Famke, F-A-M-K-E. F-A-M-K-E. Can anyone know, like, give me a, uh, a thingy how to pronounce that. Uh, and uh, she lent some money to this young lad uh, that she learned herself. It's her own money. He was furious with her for doing it, uh, and they got and he got into a, uh, and she ran away, and he just got absolutely hammered, uh, and then that's kind of where the journal finishes, uh, and you don't really realise uh, what what happens next, uh, but he all we know is is that uh, he had a massive falling out with his daughter, who ran away, and he then got drunk, and that's the last entry in this journal, uh, and at that point they're going to go up the stairs. And up these stairs, they go all the way around here, and they come up here, in this bit here, level three. Uh, as they come out, level three, there's a small landing, uh, and in the middle, you can see an opening that goes through to the ground floor, which is funny, they never noticed that one. Oh, that's how the ghost went up through. Yeah, retcon, we'll retcon that, because I didn't read it through properly. Uh, that's how the ghost went up through, uh, and if they, if they stare here, there just is one wooden chair which is against the wall, staring out of the window at the far side. And apart from that, there is nothing else visible in this room. There's just dust and cobwebs, and there's, the floor is like covered in a thin layer of dust. And as they're walking, you can see their footprints. That obviously no one's really been around here for ages. Not up here, anyway. Uh, and so they, they walk over uh, to the chair. Now, here we go. Uh, I think it is very unlikely that anyone would think, well, let's do a scene check first. Scene check, as they go up there, anything exceptional? Uh, expected scene, no, they just walk in. So, next, I think it's very unlikely any of them would sit in the chair. No, none of them sit in the chair. No one thinks to sit in the chair. Why would they sit in the chair? I don't know why they'd sit in the chair, but between you and I, if they had sit in the chair, they would get some, like a, a, a vision would come to them. So, I, I mean, this is nearly done. We'll have a fight at the top with the ghost, because uh, otherwise it's boring. Uh, We'll get to the top. So, next bit, they're going to this bit. Uh, there, there's not much there. Where the hell's Bates gone? Bates! Oh, coming, Captain. Coming, coming. Uh, Bates will come along. Let's make Bates make an agility check. Ooh, he fails. He slips. He slips whilst trying to rush up the stairs because he's, he's got this. He'll keep the book. So, he's got the diary, the journal. But, Master Bates. Whoops. All right, who's? H-A-U-S. Uh, he's got agility of three, so that only gives him a 10. So he slips. As he slips, he tumbles down a bit and he sprains his ankle doing two points of damage, putting him on four hit points. Ow! What's you doing now, lad? I hurt me ankle. Oh, Captain. Oh, stop your whinging and get up here. Now they're all then going to start walking up the next level to the upper tower, which is level four. And so this is from here, up here. Now, what's in the upper floor? There's a balcony, uh, 
outside here with a striking view. Now, what would we buy this for? It's a striking view of the horizon. Oh, Coral Town and the jungle and the castle. They can see it all. Hasn't he got a spyglass? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Captain Pete's got a spyglass. So he's going to stand up there and he's going to go, I wonder if I can see that barmaid in her room. Uh, uh, and then we've got strong breezes coming across with the smell of brine and decay. <gasps> oh, brings back the memories, doesn't it, lad? Oh, it does for me. Indeed, it does, Captain. Uh, now, what they can see, though, is they can see that... What have we got here? Now, there's a chance that some seagulls will come swooping in. All right, so what we're going to do is, is that it looks like the lighthouse, the main light lamp, which is this bit here. Do you know what a lighthouse looks like? A lighthouse light? Have you ever seen like a lighthouse? Have you ever been up a lighthouse? If you ever get a chance, go up a lighthouse. There's not, they're not many in real use anymore. Uh, there's not much use for them. But they're quite interesting things to go up. The light is huge with the, the focal lenses on them, massive. It's quite impressive. Uh, but that looks like a chair's been whacked through it and it's been smashed up. They also, if they're making it a, uh, let's make them, I'll make, who's got the best presents? It's uh, the young bits or Exo. I think Exo's gonna have a go. Exo's gonna stand around going, hmm. Nah. Now, Bates is up there. He's now he's read the book and he's a bit interested. What there could be going on around here? No, none of them have got the idea, which is a shame, really. So what they didn't notice was they didn't notice that part of the outer fence is broken as though someone's toppled, toppled against it. So they haven't noticed that. You and I know that. It's our secret. Don't tell the crew. But they will have seen, we will make it easy for them to notice that somebody smashed up the lighthouse with a chair. And we'll say, if they do a really good roll, we'll do the same XO. 10, yeah, that, you'll notice that. No, Bates is too busy uh, reading the book to notice it. There you go. Do you know, Captain, I think this has been destroyed. Someone sabotaged this. Someone took a chair to it. Wonder why they did that. Now, Let's give Cat and Pete. Cat and Pete is going to take a look and go, with his presents, he's going to have 17. Oh, that's all right. Do you know, lads, this looks like it happened quite a long time ago. You've got all the bits of glass and all that. It don't look like it was recent, do it? There's dust all over it. Looks like it happened ages ago. Uh, so, I mean, they could piece together that it was the lighthouse keeper who did it. Uh, I wonder what like his body, his body would be somewhere, wouldn't it? Oh no, it would have fallen down the cliff. I think it would, it, only if they go exploring the cliff bottom would they find it. And I'll do them do that. Uh, as if they go, maybe they'll go down and explore the cellar next. Uh, but first off, I'm going to give a three in 10 chance that we're going to get attacked by crows. Oh yes. So seagulls come swooping down. They hear this noise. What's that bloody no Oh my gold seagulls! And there are, how many? D4 seagulls come swooping in. These are scav- Oh, one. One scavenging seagull, uh, page at 98, is gonna come sweeping in. Page 98, where are you, savaging seagull? Uh, oh, they're ugly, look at that. Look at that fella there. He's ugly as. Oh, I'm not saying, I'm not being avianist, but he's an ugly bird. Uh, all right, it's got hit points of four in the belly of the seagull. Oh, this might be something in the belly of the seagull. All right, so uh, who goes first? This seagull swoops in to come and grab uh, grab something, something shiny. Oh, one of uh, may <laughs> he's gonna try and grab Cat and Pete's new sword. Oh, plus two, he goes first, the bird goes first. All right. Uh, when time to the test more. Okay, so he is going to swoop in and attack Captain Pete, and he's going to attempt to get something off. So Captain Pete has to dodge. Captain Pete, as it's swooping in, Captain Pete goes, Oh, get away from me, fella. 12, 14, yeah, Captain Pete dodges out of the way uh, as it swoops down to try and grab the, uh, the his new uh, uh, officer's cutlass. Uh, where is it? Cutlass, try to swoop in and grab the officer's cutlass. Off the back of that, Captain Pete is going to grab his flintlock and Captain Pete is going to try and shoot it. 
Oh, it's got it's got metallic feathers, so it's got armor. Oh, Flintlock bypasses armor. Natural twenty. Double damage. All right. This is so it's two d four, doubled. One, <laughs> five, doubled. Ten. <laughs> it's got four hit points. Again, Captain Pete. He's trigger happy. He's Captain Pete. He goes, oh, come here, lad. And it goes, uh, and what falls out of it and tumbles to the floor is seven, three fingers, three, three fingers. Uh, all right, that's, that's delicious. Three fingers fall to the ground. What, what do I want that for? Uh, good point, Captain Pete, I don't know. And that's basically what they found up here. They're just looking around and they can't really piece together uh, anything. Uh, what? Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna consume one of his devil's luck to give him a re-roll of trying to work out uh, what's going on. Uh, he needs 14s. No, 11. That's no good, Captain Pete. Because uh, then he could work out what it was and he could solve the whole problem with the lighthouse keeper. All right, then, lads. Might, we, we might as well go down it and have a look. What's in that cellar? Could you remember the cellar door? I oh, yeah, I remember the cellar door. We could try and get that open. So they go down. Uh, and the cellar door, it says it's locked. Uh, cellar door locked. So if we roll to see if the governor was outside and he's not. All right, let's see what we can do to get this open. All right then lads, what are we gonna do to get it open? Let's say, all right, when they go downstairs, first off, scene check. Altered scene. Uh, all right, then it's not locked, it's open. That makes it a bit different. So we're expecting it to go down. So it needs to be slightly different. So what we're gonna have is, uh, they go down <laughs> and there's, uh, cause some homeless people sometimes sleep here. So as they go down, they see some homeless people sort of like, they can hear someone moving around and they're looking a bit nervous. Oh right, there, that's what you're doing. Oh, hello, oh, we just come here to have a skip. We didn't mean to cause any problems. Not with you tough pirate types. Yes, we are tough. Now, how'd you get down this cellar? Oh, there's a key hidden under a rock over there. Ah, thank you very much. Uh, so they use the key, which is in the rock over there. Can you see it? It's just down there. And they grab the key and they click the lock and they open it up and they go down. And it's really dark down there. Really dark indeed. Have they got, oh, they've got that lantern that glows green. They've got that lantern. I don't think they got rid of that lantern that glows green. Even if they did, then uh, we've got Book of Poems. Uh, I didn't, didn't remember about that. They've got that lantern, that relic lantern thing. Uh, so they're using that glowing lantern that never goes out, but it's only got a five foot green glow. They start going down and they can see that in the middle of the here, uh, here we go. Uh, so they can see that there's a, this, this they can't see this bit. So this bit here they can't see. There's a cage which looks like it's been used recently and it's got all blood at the bottom of this cage. Uh, and there's rocky walls all the way around the outside and it looks like it's been actually used. There's jars and various other things around here. And it looks like this whole area has actually been quite quite in use. Uh, and that's, the, so let's give them, let's give them a presence check to see if they can work out how, no, no, <laughs> no, I haven't got a clue. So uh, there are <laughs> these, these geezers, they're wandering around, and unless it's right up in their face trying to attack them, they've got no idea what's going on. They just want, oh, but, uh, oh I was going to send them to Skeleton Point. I have no idea what sort of chaos they're going to get up to. Oh yeah, Captain Pete has to reload his flintlock. All right, lads, let's have a butchers around here. What have we got? Uh, so they're going to go, while the lighthouse is mostly abandoned beyond the occasional vagrant, the ritual chamber in the cellar is often accessed by the government. Well, they haven't found the ritual thing yet because it's a rocky passage hidden behind a bookcase. So that's a bookcase at the end. They need a DR12 to notice. Okay. Can't be. No, three. Hasn't got a clue. <laughs> I'm going to go for all of them. Not a single one of them is going to notice, is it? Stains? Oh, stains get a 20. No, was that Stains? No, Stains is a 19. Stains notices. Uh, Bates? No. XO? No. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely awesome. Uh, so, <laughs> Stains is looking at the bookcase going, oh, 
this looks a bit funny, this does, this looks like it's been moved. And XO is going, do you know, Captain, I can't see anything around here. I think we might as well just go back to the pub. I'm quite thirsty right now. I don't have no idea why we come up here. We should have just stayed in the pub or gone to that skeleton point. Do you know, Captain, I think it was quite interesting. This book's really good. He talks about all to do with the sea and he's missed his daughter. He really loved his daughter, he does, you know, Captain. You should have a read. She makes sales. We might be able to find her. Do you know, lads, this is absolutely rubbish. I thought there'd be treasure and stuff here. Do you know, Captain, I'm pretty sure we can find something behind this bookcase. What? Behind the bookcase. Behind the bookcase? What are you talking about behind the bookcase, Dane? you got no idea what you're talking about. Now, come on, lad. I'm going to move the bookcase. Don't move the bookcase. And he moves the bookcase. And behind the bookcase, there is a passage. Oh, how do you know about that there, then, Staines? I used my brain, Captain. Oh, did you? I didn't know you had one. Uh, so behind there, there is this passageway. Now, that passageway leads down not very far, a few feet, and then there's this massive room. Now, let's roll a d10, and if we get a one, the, 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 uh, the governor is kind of like doing some nefarious stuff, and turns about and goes, I'm a bit surprised. Oh, I thought it was a one, it's seven. No, the governor's not there. So, what we've got is we've got a curved circle, and in the ground, carved into the ground, there is a pentagon with, is it a pentagon? Something with eight points. Uh, and there's got eight black candles at each point. And there's all sigils carved into the rock. Uh, and the sigils look like they're covered over this sort of like reddish, rusty stuff. Uh, stone passage. Yeah, you're right. Uh, cast a ritual here at night. No one's going to cast a ritual here because they don't know how to do that. Uh, if they fail, a shadow demon appears. So anyway, they've got some red, red, black candles. They can get out of here with black candles. Let's give them a roll. I'm going to give them a roll on uh, loot the body. They can have one roll and loot the body because they've been so bloody pathetic. Uh, D100. Here we go. What do they find in here? 71. 71. Vial of blowfish poison. All right. So there's a small vial uh, with a skull and crossbones on, a uh, vial of poison, uh, one, there's one go, which is uh, DR12 tough or D10 damage. So whilst they, stay, they give, it, give it a butcher's and it's quite out in the open, so we won't make them roll presence checks. And there's a little vial of poison just sitting there that they pocket and go, do you know, this wasn't that great. Well, I don't know, Captain. We kind of got that purple gem. It looks like it's worth some money and a bag of silver. That was all right. And you know, young Bates has got a book that he's been loving to read. It was a nice little joint out. I don't think anyone's has suffered. It's quite good. Uh, I might roll. Let's give him a roll on... Is there any counter table? Let's see if we can find any counter table and they can... A general encounter table for undead or something, and they can have one last little fight uh, before they leave, if I can find an encounter table. Nope, can't find an encounter table. So, what we're going to... Oh, actually, what was that? I just saw the word encounters as I was flicking through. Encounters. Oh, no, that's inside one of these dungeon things. There's no encounter table for this. Uh, all right, I'm going to say that as they leave, they are going to be accosted by the ghost of Cornelius Willem. Uh, and that will be our final bit. So as they're about to leave, so they come back down the tower, so they come out, they go back into the main thing just to have one last look to see if there's anything worth stealing because they've not found anything else. And as they're about to leave and turn, standing, uh, so they're going to have the fight in here, standing there at the door, there is uh, a ghost which looks a bit, but not exactly, but just a bit like that. Stand there, and it says, why, I can't do a Dutch accent, I'd love to be able to do a Dutch accent to do this. Uh, oh, oh, if I could, if Mandy was in the country, uh, I'd get, because she had to stay behind for a to do some family stuff, uh, I'd get her to do the accent. So anyway, he stands there, uh, and he's not happy, 
Uh, what have we got? Uh, can be invisible until it attacks. It has a deal, 14 to hit. It's got HP of 7, Cutlass D6. All right, it's just going to have a Cutlass. It's not going to use the Harpoon. And it's going to say, why has he got a Cutlass? No, he won't have a Cutlass. What will he have? Uh, he's going to have a broken chair leg. He's going to have a broken chair leg. Because then afterwards, we'll give him a roll to see if they can work out that he was the one who smashed it. Uh, he's going to say, get out, but in a Dutch accent, uh, and then attack them. And then that's, that's, that's basically it. And then we'll roll to see who goes first. Uh, our crew goes first. Catwin uh, will go first first. Catwin is going to, oh, he's, he's going to kill him in one shot, isn't he? He's going to one shot him. I can just tell. I can tell he's going to one shot him. He's going to roll presence check. He needs to roll 14s to hit. Nope, misses. Okay, he fires off the, the flintlock. Boom! Missing. Uh, and then tucks it back into his waistband. Uh, Exor is going to level his uh, musket. And he's going to have a go. Uh, so he gets, he's got a presence of, so he needs 10s. 13, he hits. 2d6, he's only got 7 hit points. 2d6, come on lads. Uh, 13, Pres yeah there, because that was a 15, wasn't it? Uh, he does, he does, he does max damage. 12 points damage. Uh, they, <laughs> the uh, uh, musket goes off with a massive deafening bang, which causes everyone's ears to ring. And like when they basically, the, the, the uh, black powder smoke clears, uh, the body is gone. We'll give them another roll on the things in your pocket. Uh, loot the body table. Uh, 86, 86, 86, uh, D8 gold doubloons, worth the result in silver. Okay, he's, there's, there's 86 silvers worth, 86 silver pieces worth of gold. So, that's that, they, they have uh, done that, they had the, let's, let's give him one last thing to work out that he had a chair leg on him. 13, yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. Bates will go, do you know, it's very funny he's had a chair leg on him and the lighthouse was smashed by a chair leg. Maybe we can go find his daughter. Maybe she works in the town. And they'll go back to the pub. Uh, and so what we will do is we will leave it there. That was, a, that was a little adventure. So basically that's it. You just do that. You make stuff up as you go along. Uh, thank you very much. Next next session, we will go to the big, big adventure and do a skeleton point, I reckon. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining. So thank you very much if you're a subscriber. Uh, thank you for subscribing so as you keep up to date with what's going on. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscription. It'll be lovely, lovely, lovely. Thank you very much to our members. If you'd like to become a member, there's a link in the description. And thank you very much for watching. And we will leave it there. And I will leave you to have an awesome uh, rest of your day. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.